It's kind of tricky to know where to start with you, but I guess what would be really great in terms of trying to work out how quick you have felt you've reacted to the shift, I think, that you've found ourselves in in the past you know, six months and whether that has changed strategy and it's inspired strategy or how it's affected what you plan to do. Well, you know, it was actually really a fascinating time um, since, since the pivot, if you will, in, in March when we were all sent home for quarantine. And we, we slowly started to realize that um, everyone was sent home from, for quarantine and watch time was increasing significantly on the platform. So we work closely with the marketing department and with our partnerships department who, who oversees all of our, our YouTube creators, our fabulous YouTube creators. And we, we started talking about what could we do to um, acknowledge everyone who's staying at home and offer them something special. And um, so we, because creators are a group of people who already create content on their own from home and know what they're doing, um, we refocus a lot of our uh, content really working with um, creators and uh, people who could pivot quickly and get content going quickly. And, uh, and we were able to uh, do a whole kind of myriad of shows and an interesting slate and provide more original content um, this spring when people needed it and were looking for it. And that covers so many types of programming as well. You know, it's not just, you know, it's not just music, entertainment. It's about kids. It's about family. It's about education as well. It's a kind of cross the board of all those. Yeah, we work primarily, thank you for saying that. We work, we work primarily in um, uh, four arenas. We kind of focus on what makes YouTube unique. And, um, and not to repeat what you just said, but <laughs> for me, so thank you. Um, the focus tends to be on um, what we call personalities, which is YouTubers and celebrities, um, or, or really any kind of interesting dynamic um, public persona. Um, and music, uh, all kinds of music, which is your specialty, and, um, uh, and family and kids, and educational content. Yeah. It's interesting because being a, being a mom of two boys as well, and in terms of what we look for as well, and I think more so than ever, having that sort of idea that, that YouTube Originals is, is kind of coming up with ideas to, to help kids in these situations with the educational side of things, I think is really encouraging and really healthy to hear as well. And we also, you know, we're, we're really, I was really moved by um, how so many people wanted to give back. And a lot of our shows, um, most of our shows did fundraising for the World Health Organization and other really meaningful outlets that were helping people. That kind of made me proud to be at YouTube. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to um, watch a session last year at Edinburgh in person in a big room with lots of people. And it was interesting to hear the kind of strategy this time last year. And I just wanted to ask how how quick strategy changes, you know, and how, how quick it can be that you are, you know, looking for different things or the, the business model has changed. Is it kind of, is it an annual thing or are you being really reactive to things quicker? So that's a really interesting question. Um, and, and, um, you know, it, it, it makes me want to talk about two things. One, I'll answer your question, but two, um, but two, uh, a lot of people come in and they say, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? I get that question a lot, right, as a development executive and someone who oversees content. And I don't like to answer it because, A, um, I can tell you I'm looking for a show about cats. And then the, that, that meeting leaves and the next meeting comes in and they pitch me a fabulous show about cats and I buy it. And I really don't want to buy another show about cats. And so I've sent you off on a direction thinking about cats and I, an hour later I'm, I'm checked off the cat box. And, um, and, and B, I like hearing from people what they're thinking about and what their vision is and supporting that vision. And um, I'm looking, so I don't really know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something I haven't heard before. Um, 
But also, the other reason I don't like to answer that question is that strategy does change quite a bit. We, you know, I just thinking back in my network days, you know, one minute ABC is a family, very much a family network. And then the next minute friends hits and everybody wants the next friends hit and everyone's sort of pivoting to be an 18 to 34 young adult hip network because they think that's the new thing. And we, we pivot quite a bit at, at YouTube too. There's a lot of strategic thinking <laughs> and, and sometimes I mean, overall, I think it's very healthy and good to constantly question, are you doing the right thing? What, what could you be doing better? Of course. And I work with a lot of really super smart people. But um, uh, I also think sometimes you have to see a strategy through. You have to take the time to see a strategy through. The strategy you, you came up with, you came up with for a reason. And sometimes it, people forget it takes a while to implement a strategy. Um, but that said, we, um, we made a, lo a very significant pivot um, uh, over a year ago where we decided to, uh, we were, well, when I was hired, I was hired to build an SVOD service, that subscription video on demand. Yeah. And all the shows we were doing, including Cobra Kai, uh, our Karate Kid spinoff, were um, behind the paywall. And then we decided, um, you know what, that's really not the essence of YouTube. Yeah. And, um, and the essence of YouTube is, is, is accessibility in many ways and 2 billion users a day getting, you know, getting this opportunity to look at content. So we decided to have sort of a dual strategy, uh, AVOD, SVOD, AVOD being advertiser video on demand. And now all of our content runs for free um, in AVOD with ads. And if you want to subscribe to YouTube Premium, you get a fantastic music service. You get um, all of our content ad-free. You can binge our content. And you often get an ancillary content as well. So we change the strategy. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of strategy changes at tech companies from what I understand. What's the reaction been from the audience? Has that shift been a successful thing to do? No, it's, been, it's actually been great. It's been remarkably successful. Um, and at a time when um, Fox is touting The Masked Singer, for instance, which is a show I like, as a, as a major hit with the one rating, woohoo, they got you know, over a million people to watch an episode. Um, you know, we, we're looking at 200 million views for Justin Bieber, 75 million views for Age of AI with Robert Downey Jr., um, 53 million views for Instant Influencer, our, our uh, makeup competition show with James Charles. The numbers have been off the charts and the response has been really very positive from viewers and advertisers as well. Where would you say, you know, it's interesting you bring up a kind of a network channel like Fox. Where would you say you position yourself and who are, you know, your competitors? When you think about traditional media or streaming you know, streaming services, well, who are your kind of direct competitors and where do you kind of position yourself? Well, it's a really interesting time, Edith, and there's never been more content available to stream and watch than that, that, I, that I can remember. And I've been, I've been doing this a long time, even though I looked so young. You it's look hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine, right? But, um, uh, uh, it, you know, it's kind of crazy, and I, and I love it. As someone who like gobbles up a lot of programming and watches a lot, and is a fan of there all different kinds of genres, I I love all, all the um, optionality. But um, uh, but I, well, how do I think about it? YouTube's so unique? It's really the most you know unique place I've, I've ever worked, and I've been at Fox and ABC and Warner Brothers and a Lifetime and MTV, as you mentioned. Um, and because we, we can do all kinds of things that the networks can't do. And that's one of the things I love about working at YouTube and that makes us so different. We have interactivity. I think people watch YouTube different than they watch broadcast and cable, um, which, I, which I believe, my, I have my own personal theory about it, which is that you're, you're because you interact with YouTube because you start and stop the video because you're probably watching it on a device um, more than you're casting it in your living room. You're, you're holding it closer, it's closer to you physically and you're more engaged with it. 
and um, uh, and so I, so it's a it's a more intimate relationship, if you will, um, which is why I think we have the success we have with creators because creators and their fans really feel like they know one another. So I don't really think about the other networks because I also don't program like I used to program. I don't think about time slots. I don't think about, you know, running episodes Monday night at nine um, or, you know, uh, I, or I, I don't think about the 30 minute program and the 60 minute program and the 90 minute doc, um, which has been very freeing. And um, at first, when I first got there, a little overwhelming because there were the, the parameters I had uh, grown up with in the industry were, you know, I had to throw them out. Um, but, uh, but it's fun too. It's fun too. And it makes YouTube just an exciting place to develop content. Well, I think it's really interesting the kind of the journey and almost the kind of, you know, the kind of people's perception of YouTube and changing that from, you know, from it being one thing to be in this, this, like you say, multifaceted platform that really doesn't have any boundaries in terms of creativity, really, you know, and I think that has that been something that's been really important to you in terms of particularly really pushing the YouTube originals and making sure that people are really aware that you're investing in stories and in people and not just on a, on a real international platform as well. Yeah, the global nature of the platform is like just incredibly amazing, really. Um, and uh, and I, 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 lo I love that because, um, you know, I know I love uh, uh, the Great British Baking Show and, um, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge is my new heroine. Um, and, uh, and then I love K-pop, you know, and that's coming out of Korea. And um, and you 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 have the opportunity to um, watch all, you know all of this. Uh, you have access to all of our global original content. We do original content in seven different languages right now, um, um, and uh, and it's been very successful all over. So the K we're working on our fourth K-pop show um, because K-pop is popular all over the world. And, um, and we have a great comedy in France called Groom um, that just finished its second season and set in a hotel. It's really fun. And we've done original content in uh, Germany, Japan, India. Um, and uh, in fact, I was just last night, I was meeting with the India team and uh, we were talking about creative, creator spotlights, which is a series we do on up and coming creators. Yeah. And the stories are so moving, Edith, um, you know, about the people in India who were just about destitute and created a YouTube show and um, how it gave them a path um, to a, a better life. And it's, you know, literally as they're pitching me these creator stories, I'm crying. Um, so. So I love that part of I love that part of being at YouTube.